this is Blythe Baines, and you're listening to Inspirato Projecto. All right, so the the, uh, the interruption there in the broadcast um, was of, uh, it was the timer to, because uh, I think the, the dinner's arriving soon. However, you were, you were in the middle of saying something spectacular about our um, just... Yeah. Oh, yeah, Del Coronado. Del- our specters, specters of our past. Uh, the writer of... Uh, of uh, the Wizard of Oz, he he frequent bomb bomb, L. Frank bomb. He lived nearby and he would always go there and he would always write. And he apparently he designed these big beautiful chandeliers that's in the main like this main banquet area. And uh, that main banquet area, have you seen any of the photos of what went on in there? No. Oh my gosh, it was swinging. Stone. It was swinging. There were there was a little a stage up there, like elevated stage, and it was like one of those like. You know, rambunctious uh, jazz kind of places. It just, ooh, just like, like that golden age. <laughs> and uh, he designed the these crowns because Adele Cor- wait, Coronado means crown. I think that's what someone was telling me. So he made those crowns. And uh, what the woman told me was, if you look at the ceiling of it, the ceiling actually is built just like the uh, the. Uh, the hull of a ship, so it's basically an upside down ship. The whole, the whole ceiling of that Del Coronado uh, banquet room—I don't know what you call it—but that whole thing, you look at it, and you go, "Oh my God, that is the bottom of a ship! It's a bottom of a ship! It's like a galleon, like one of those like pirate ships, and it's just huge." So that's how they put it all together over there. And to know that uh, the writer of *Wizard of Oz* was hugely inspired by that place and wrote his. Uh, wrote those books there oh my gosh and then I started asking around I had this idea I had this vision I wondered if anyone committed suicide at that place uh jumped out of a window for instance and sure enough I found out about there's that woman Kate Morgan Kate Morgan is her name she lives in a certain room and people choose to stay in this room in hopes of seeing her ghost in hopes of interacting with her and it totally seems like one of those things that would be on a paranormal show and to know that Kate Morgan hangs out there you know who knows what kind of crazy stories happen did, did they see her in the mirror was it like one of those uh, bloody mary type things was she do they turn over and all of a sudden whoop there she is oh oh hi kate morgan and there she's jumping on the bed was it like kate morgan why are you looking through all my why are you looking through all my uh, my cupboards i put my personal artifacts in those cupboards kate morgan <laughs> what are you what are you doing out there kate morgan I know you're an apparition, I mean, but come on, you know what I mean? You're an apparition, I mean, but come on, let's have a little bit of sensibility here, you know? Let's use the golden rule. Kate Morgan, would you want me to go rifling through your personal artifacts? Now, yes, one could say, well, she's just a ghost, or one might say she's just a figure of your imagination as a ghost. But the main point here is, uh, if there's a possibility that something this extraordinary could exist, why the heck not investigate it further? Furthermore, why the heck not investigate into trying to make a nice uh, relationship with this kind of entity if it's from you know a, a, another dimension a parallel universe whatnot uh, why not try to figure out how to make friends with this thing because if this thing uh, if it's just a, a block of energy that's walking around or if it's uh, truly you know from another dimension and it's peeking its way in or it's a if it's if it's truly this spirit that's you know trapped here in this on this uh, earthly plane or whatever, you know, why not figure out s- some way to communicate with this, with this being and, and find out what it knows. And, um, heck if it's, if it's, if it's, if it's got one foot in like the fourth dimension or fifth dimension and it's got the other foot there in the third, in your, in the third dimension, then certainly it knows how to communicate it's, it's the bridge between these things. And if it's, you know, kind of like this, this winding bridge that we just went up. We went up two winding bridges to get here. And then a long pathway. So just like with that winding bridge. I mean, she's, she's, she's got, here's this spirit, one foot in the spirit world. One foot in the sort of earthling world. And she's become this bridge. And she's there for you to talk to. And heck, I would say listen to all her advice. <laughs> listen to all her advice. Find some way. Heck, if you've got recording equipment... Put her on film. Uh, grab, grab, uh, you know, just like we're talking on the on the uh, podcast. Grab your recording device. Every single, uh, every I'll tell you right now. Every single cell phone really ought to come with some way uh, to record things. Audio, at the very least. Most of them have a way of recording video, so certainly they got some way of recording audio. So put on that audio. Put on that video. Press 
press record and see what those apparitions are saying. Um, can they communicate with maybe your loved ones who have passed away? How nice would that be? Become friends with that, with that apparition. And it's crazy because I had that vibe as I was pulling up. Um, and I guess as the story goes, Kate Morgan apparently was going to have a, a date uh, and her date stood her up. And I don't know what was so devastating about this particular date, but she, I don't know how she killed herself. Uh, I don't, I don't know if, I don't even want to, I don't even want to think of ways that she might have possibly killed herself, but she, she did. And there's a specific room. And it's funny because when I was there at the Del Coronado, there's a woman, this woman, and she saw me looking at this particular thing on the wall. I thought it was a dumb waiter. Um, from way back in the day, I, I, I imagine, wow, a place like that would totally have dumb waiters all over the hallways and, and they just, they got their little elevator and up it goes, there goes their food. That was their way of room service perhaps. And I'm looking at this thing and I go, is this, was this a dumb waiter? Do you know? And she goes, oh no. But, and then all of a sudden she just started telling me all of this stuff about the place and that she lives nearby and she always goes up there. She knows all this history. And I said, is this place haunted? Are there, you know, are there, uh, I got a vibe that maybe someone might've killed themselves here or something, you know, because the, it's like, okay, if you're going to kill yourself, like the Golden Gate Bridge, do it in a beautiful place. You know, that's usually the philosophy, you know, um, heck, why, why die in an alley when you can jump off the Golden Gate Bridge and, you know, see this, this beauty or, or, you know, at the Del Coronado, which is another, another beautiful place. So I thought, you know, to just ask this woman, she goes, yep, there's Kate Morgan. And she starts telling me, about this whole thing about this lady. She goes, we're going to walk past her room. And as we continued up and up and up, the, the layers, the hallways got uh, narrower and the ceilings got lower. It was so miraculous. It was like something that you would invent. You would, you would think, wouldn't that be funny if there were all these layers and then as it gets more to the top, all of a sudden it starts getting narrower and lower. And you'd th- you'd say, you might say something like that out loud going, wouldn't that be funny if that happened? Well, Someone thought it was so funny that they decided to invent that into an actual <laughs> building that exists out there. Now, the Del Coronado, um, I don't know how much it costs to, to rent a room uh, for one of those nights. Um, I've heard quite a bit. Now, there are these little ca- ca- cabanas that are outside of there that are, you know, who knows how much a night. 2000 bucks, 3000 bucks. Um, one would hope uh, it would come with its own personal swimming pool with a price like that. Um, or... Uh, I don't, I don't even know what kind of amenities one, one could expect out of something like that. 2000 3000 bucks a night. Yikes. So they got these different areas as you're walking around. You can, it's kind of a tourist attraction because you're looking around and you're seeing the, the you're going into the in gift shop and they got some like it hot playing on the, on the, on the TV. Or they got uh, uh, books about Wizard of Oz. Oh, that was the cool thing too because there was that, do you remember the scene, the, the, the lady dressed like the, did you remember seeing the Wizard of Oz, char- Oz characters there? The, the, at the at Del Coronado, there was a lady dressed like the. the oh, that's what it was. They're putting on the Wizard of Oz. They're putting no. on the Wizard of Oz out on the beach that on one of those days that we were going to play. No. And way. I wanted to sneak off and see it, but I saw these people walking through, and they were dressed like the Wicked Witch, and <clears throat> Dorothy, wow. and you know, I would have loved to have seen a flying monkey. Oh my God! Look at there it is. We're looking at the Santa Monica Pier right now. Mmm. Oh, that is tasty. Thank you for sharing that with me, Polly. You didn't see any of the people dressed like Wizard of Oz at Del Coronado? Missed it. Totally missed it. They were so in the gift shop. That's where I was learning about a lot, a lot of this stuff. That and the conversation with this, this woman who, at this point, I'm doubting her existence. Maybe she herself was just a, a hologram walking through the halls. Um, you never this, know at the Del Coronado. You never know. You never, ever, never know. And what's so cool about this place is that you can look around, you can see all these photos of what, what it was like back in the day. What was that like for you to see those photos back in the day? It made me think of The Shining. Oh, what a great way of putting it. With Jack Nicholson. Oh, I wonder, I wonder, wow, I got to do some research now. I wonder if the Del Coronado might have been an inspiration behind The Shining Hotel, the way it was set up. I, I, wouldn't, wouldn't, be interesting? I wouldn't put it past I don't know. your creative insight. Oh, uh, Oh, dude. Inspirado projecto. Inspirado projecto. I think that um, I wouldn't put it past your creative mindset to, to make the connection of The Shining and Del Coronado. Goodness. Could you imagine just being the only dude in Del Coronado in a place like that, all by yourself, 
and and trying to write a novel or to take care of the grounds. I mean, do you think you would go crazy in a situation I would definitely like that? go nuts. I would go insane. What if you had your saxophone with you, though? Then I would I would be, think I would have a little bit of an outlet. A little more of like... Because, yeah, at least would, a little something to... Yeah, something familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something uh, that was reminiscent of home. But that character, man, he had... He oh, had, yeah. He was a, it was... He had got in his brain. Oh, yeah. He got, I mean, look at this. Look at these. Look at these. Look at these spirals. Spirals. This is amazing. I love this. I love this. It's so kick ass and it looks relatively new, right? I mean this this stuff was kind of it looks like it was built within the past five years, ten years five, maybe. Yeah. Cause uh I don't Well, heck, maybe because I I just I've never been in this in this area. Um You know what's so great about this is this this is like the poor man's version of like for anyone who's not very good with north, south, east, and west directions. The cool thing is it's very clear which way is north. The beautiful yeah, 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 yeah. Cause I know ocean is west. That helped out so much. So I use that as a way to describe to the listeners where we were in we're relation. The Pacific Ocean right now. We are, we are. At, at this moment, we're heading back, we're going down the stairs. I would the, I would say the sun's about two hours from setting. Oh. Now, uh, we're playing at what time? Um, I've heard different Different appropriations, like uh, yeah. 7.30, 8. Uh, yeah. I think it's somewhere around 8 o'clock. So, this is the sun is setting, I think. Yeah. It's really the, yeah, perfect, that's the good. perfect setting for us. That's good. So it was really a good idea. At first I thought, well, we got, you know, we got uh, lights here. Do we need extra lights? Well, you know, Chaz, Chaz loves adding all as many lights as possible. As and, much stuff as humanly possible. Yeah. And, and I think what's so beautiful about that aspect, all those little details, is that when people show up to the show, they're not expecting, I mean, unless, of course, they've seen, you know, uh, some YouTube videos or something, but they're not expecting to see that kind of detail put into something like that. They don't know what <coughs> is going to happen. Yeah. They're not expecting to get a concert experience. No. Um, and uh, basically an amphitheater experience. Um, and a bar. Or, uh, you know, Starlight Bowl. Wow. I love that because that helped us visualize even more the possibility of playing in those huge kind of venues. We are facing north. We are now facing north. north. We just we're now we're looking at the the uh, that bridge that we first met you on in there it uh, is right there, part written, one. Uh, clear white lettering on the green California, California incline. Sign, California incline. Holy cow! That actually sounds like a good name for a band, and I'm sure there's probably one out there. But that's a great premonition cover, either way. Even album cover, yeah. Album cover. California Incline. Oh boy, hold on. Let me take a picture of this. All right, hold on. I got an idea now. You just uh, you just sparked you spark you know you spark a lot of inspirato, and that's why that's another reason why I like Andy. Okay, so I'm gonna see. Yeah, look towards it. I'm gonna see if I can if I can get a good enough focus where I can actually see what that is. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm gonna try to see if I can actually see the California Incline. Oh, oh wait. I gotta find the right little chunk. Oh wait, oh, that's good. I gotta stay right there. Is that the California incline? Is that it? I like this. You see, do you see the way that the light is just playing off yeah, these little spots? that's incredible. <laughs> that's neat. Can you zoom in on the California incline? Yeah, there it is. Awesome. bam -o. You know, it's interesting because that reminds me of... Because um, the California Incline sign is so far away. What's so interesting is what that reminds me of. Alan Watts was telling me that... Um, uh, oh, gosh. What paintings? There was a certain culture that would hey, paint paintings. I know. I don't have any... Uh, I don't. I don't. I, I'm I all out. Usually I got... Uh, oh, for this hat? Oh, yes. that'd be great. Oh, that'd be great. Back at the uh, Starlight Bowl, I had the Yadley Cruz sticker over oh the gosh. Highway Star hat. Oh, oh, that was awesome. Yeah. That was Dave. Man, oh, we'll oh. have hats before we know it. I just know. We I mean, we'll have all we kinds do of have hats. We have, the, uh, we have the nautical hats. I mean, not tonight. Well, we, don't have the, we don't have any, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, captain's hats. Yes, no merch. You know that'd be neat is captain's hats with that the patch the official patch on that hat. And that would be awesome. Yeah, because then it's our yeah YC. 
Yes. Established 2017. Yes. Boom. Boom. Yeah, we could have the hats that have the the YC. Yeah. So we got. We'll have the. Oh wait. Oh wait. We can go we, this way too. Oh, the. Uh, so that's good. So we could have the YC uh, two, 2017 one, and also a patch of the of the guy of the guy of the face. That'd be another fun one. Also, uh, at some point, at some point, we'll have action figures. At some point, we'll have uh, trading cards. <laughs> Collect them all. You know, I really think would be so fun is to do a action figures. Yes, action figures for sure. I just think it'd be fun is if you know, kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, how or magic. Okay, the magic. You know, the card game magic. The yes. kid, the, um, I had friends who were always magic. in it. Magic. Bow, bow. Uh, man, so this card game, it'd be fun because it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons kind of game. It'd be fun to have like a yacht rock one, like a yachtly crew kind of one, where it's like the 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 you know we're going on a journey. There's a journey. There's a there's a discovery. You know there are con- conflicts with the krakens that come popping out. Maybe we're on a maybe we're on the dream cruise. You know it's like go on the dream cruise with yachtly crew. Go on this adventure. You don't know what's going to happen. And all of a sudden, out comes the a kraken, and you know tries to grapple one of us and you know but do we have the right cards that that go oh yeah i got out of its grasp or or does stony shores get whisked off you know into the into the deep uh by some cracking <laughs> tentacle hops you know just flies out of nowhere so i think it'd be i mean you know a video game obviously <laughs> here's my card to get me out of the kraken there it is there it is there it is oh my gosh wow Ooh. Ooh, ooh, then what if the Kraken gets eaten by a whale? <laughs> and then you eventually, you get your, I mean, you get your way out of there. You, you find a way to get out of there. Kind of like uh, Geppetto. Geppetto, Geppetto and, uh, and jo, uh, J- uh, Jonah. Jonah. Jonah and Geppetto. Jonah and Geppetto. Do you think, Gepp- do you think Geppetto was, was uh, based off of Jonah in any ways besides the whale reference? Well, the, reference? Whale, the whale sele- uh, uh, similarity definitely strikes me as, mm-hmm. as uh, a little bit of co- correlation, mm-hmm, correlation mm-hmm. as they would say in the, uh, in the deep sea, the green ocean that has oh, lots of yeah. coral. Oh, yeah. They would coral. say that we have lots of correlation. Correlation. They definitely yes. would say we have a lot of correlation. Especially in, in Hawaii and uh, yeah. New Zealand. A lot of coral. New Asian. Zealand has lots of coral. I definitely see what you mean. Yes, the correlation is deep. Uh, I think this is where... Is this, this is where we take our exit through, this, through the sand. There's a trail that's created. Do you know what's so great? You went with your gut. You followed the trail. And now here we are. On our way to go eat some foodstuffs. Hey, I yeah. hear some... Uh, silence you hear on the beach is not yeah. an awkward silence this is a yeah peaceful moment it's what in time you wait oh yeah here we go. No, this wait way. oh this is the best way yeah egads egads we are making our way back to the jonathan club now one of the big things about jonathan club is that they don't like us with our cell phones here so we're gonna bid you adieu we're gonna go uh eat some food and we will be back later I was just listening to Sting. I haven't heard Sting in a while. Um, I forgot where I was. Oh, I know it was. Yachtly Crew was at the Jonathan Jonathan Club um, for that gig. And uh, I can't even remember if I podcasted during that time. Oh, that's right. Yes, I did with Paulie. Actually, part two of that uh, hike with Paulie is going to be coming up in this in this episode. Uh, so, yeah, at the Jonathan Club, I walked through this uh through the bar and they were playing sting and i was like it was a if i ever lose my faith in you and i thought holy cow this is so satisfying i haven't heard uh sting in a long time so i thought i'd listen you know give it a listen so i listened to the uh itunes uh what is it sting essentials sting essentials and he plays I'm an Englishman in New York. 
I'm an illegal alien. I'm an Englishman in New York. And, well, two things about that. Number one, uh, well, I'll say this. Wasn't York, wasn't New York named after York from England? And second of all, if that's the case, um, if Englander, if people from England started this country, then why would anyone from England be a, an illegal? You know, here illegally, so to speak, without proper paperwork, of course. Just like other countries. You want to move to Sweden? Okay, you got to become a citizen. You want to move to this spot, that spot? You got to become a citizen. There's, there's a there's certain process. Well, do English people still have to go through that process? People from from that area? If they basically were the ones who pioneered this place? That's something to think about. That's something... I never never realized that before. Um, never realized that before. It's just like, kind of, it's very interesting. This is the second thing I got to say about that, is that uh, a number of years ago, Sting played out in Grant Park, out there in Chicago, near the Big Bean. The Big, the big Silver Bean. He played out there and uh, they got a theater out there, and we were watching. I think it was a free concert, actually. And uh, he goes, and, and the song starts, and he goes, he's like, uh, wait a second, what city are we in? And they go, Chicago. And then he starts singing the song, and he still goes, I'm an illegal alien, I'm an alien in New York. I thought for sure that since he asked us what what town we were in, I thought for sure he was going to throw Chicago into it. I'm an illegal alien. I'm an alien in Chicago. <laughs> I think, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, not a huge stretch for, for this kind of alteration. <laughs> it's still a big city with big shoulders. Uh, as, uh, oh, what was his name? What was that guy? He would write about the meat district. Ooh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Ooh, it's on the tip of my tongue. The city of big shoulders. Those of you who are uh, fans of literature and uh, know the classics, you'd know the answer. You'd know the answer. All right. Uh, today is another uh, Inspirato Projecto podcast radio show on K Chung 1630 AM so if you live in Chinatown turn on your radio dial and you'll be able to hear the majesty that is sprouted forth <laughs> known as Inspirato Projecto uh, there and there and there and there and there you have it and there you have it today is Monday this is a uh, August 8th, uh, August 5th, August 5th, which is great. August, I always think eight, eight is infinity. Five, five is the broken down number of 23. 23 is known as the number of synchronicities. So when you break down, you know, or add it together rather, two, three, five. So today's eight, five. I love it. By the time you hear this episode, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see if I can uh, get this up, if I, if I still have some, interest in talking after the show. So, I bid you farewell, and you're listening to Inspirato Projecto. I'm in uh, Chinatown right now. I'm walking up to the K. Chung Studios. I just saw a family cross the street, and their little eight-year-old son was carrying a sword. I love it. A sword from Chinatown. We had an extraordinary radio show today. K. Chung. Uh, I sent the file to myself. And uh, right now it's downloading. And while it was downloading, I thought I'd go out to the post office and 
deliver this package. There's a friend uh, of Yachtly Crew who moved out to Arkansas. And uh, I'm sending her some postcards to hand out, hand out around Arkansas. And the other day I went to the post office and they, they said, oh, we're not going to be open for another half an hour. And then they said, you could use a machine though. And then I tried to use a machine and the machine wasn't working. So this is one of those items, this is one of those things where you tell someone where they go, where's my package? And you go, it's in the mail. But you're saying, see, I typed in, it's in the mail Bam! Before I went up to the to the uh, to the to the uh, to the post office, and then that's when it was closed. And so I just went up there now. And what's interesting is I even called up, or I even looked up online, and uh, I I raced over here. It said that they were going to close at six. It's now now it's five forty nine. I'm walking on my way back. Walking my way back. It was, it was, there were no humans there. I wanted to talk to humans because the humans, you can get intricacies, you know, there are intricacies with stuff. This, uh, this thing just wasn't working for me. The automated, the robot just wasn't working for me. So, uh, of course a girl just walked past wearing a Beatles shirt. I was just looking online at, uh, the Paul is Dead stuff. You know, all day, it, it's just been synchronicity after synchronicity happening on the air and after, after the show. Just incredible stuff. So, you know, I realized this is another one of those kinds of things where, I don't know if you, if you remember in, in the one podcast, uh, a couple of podcasts ago, I had meant to, oh yeah, I went up to the store and I forgot to pick up the thing that I originally went up there to get. So I came home and I decided to podcast on my way up to a different place, a market, to then get what I was looking for. I think it was some eggs or something. And, uh, you know, as I was walking up there, I remember saying, there, there's a reason here behind why I had to go back out the second time. So just as there, there was that, I know there's going to be there's going to be another one of those kinds of situations with this journey as well. There's, there's got to be some, there's got to be some reason. What's the, what's the thing? Is it offering me another opportunity to stay patient? That was one of the things we talked about. Um... Patience, infinite patience. And that's something I am working on to get better at. I expect to one day get really awesome at it because uh, I, I got to tell you, when you're, in that, when you're in that momentum and you want to keep moving and moving and grooving and going and going and going, and then you come across... Um, you know, sort of obstacles or whatnot that kind of keep you from moving in that direction, moving in that direction, moving, having to alter, alter the course. Whether it be indecisive drivers who can't make up their mind as to when the turn, um, indecisive grocery store people where they just stop their cart right in the middle of you know, everything and then, or, um, people who just take up an entire sidewalk when they're walking, when there's plenty of room for everybody to fit on there. It's interesting. It really, it really offers us those those opportunities to have that patience. And, you know, that's, I guess that, that is part of the, what goes hand in hand with the creative process goes hand in hand with it right there and when we practice that 
it makes us able to be more malleable, more sculptable, <clears throat> stuff like that. When you got clay, it's a lot easier to sculpt that than if it's a stone. A stone, to me, I think of like forcing something. What is what happens with a stone? If you try to sculpt a stone, you got to chisel away at that stuff. You got to chisel, chisel away sharp objects, sharp heavy objects. You know, just chiseling away at it. And whoa, you know what? There were these awesome things on the streets that gave you little bits of history of this area, and I don't see them anymore. What happened to him? Who thought it was a good idea to take those out? Just like some of these bus stops I'm looking at. These bus stops, they used to have seats there. They used to have a bench for you, could sit, for you to sit on. Now they're taking out those benches. And you can't help but wonder, what is the motivation? What is, what is the value that comes from doing that? What's the value? Doesn't it cost more to actually pay someone to go out there and get their special tools and yank the thing out of the out of the concrete and put it in the back of your truck wouldn't that wouldn't that cost more than simply to just let it stay there you know some of these bus stops they'd have um like these it's almost like a little a covering you know it's like a pod if you will it's like a little little spot it's got the covering over the top in case it rains that's always very helpful not to mention the homeless people that you see Homeless people then get a chance to stay out of the out of the rain. Because who really wants that? I'd like to believe. You know, I'm gonna put the intention out there. Knowing that all these infinite possibilities exist. I'm gonna pluck out of the infinity a world. I'm gonna invite this world into my reality experience. That um If inflation rises, then every other, you know, every other sort of career, what have you, raises along with it. Because how how is that possible for a society to function when they keep raising prices on everything? From from rent to uh, food to et cetera, et cetera. How do you how do you actually how do you, how do you how do you how how do you find a way? That's the that's the thing. It's like how do you find a way to carve out a life, have a life, be able to pay for things without working all the time to get it. So I'm, I'm manifesting right now. If we could all just think about this together, okay? Can we collectively, those of us, those of us who are listening to this, let's just pretend that we're all listening to this right now at the same time. Let's just pretend that we're all listening to this at the same time. And let's collectively put our masterminds together and just envision right now, envision right now, envision right now, a new earth a whole brand new earth that is wiped clean of you know bureaucratic red tape wiped clean of selfish selfish um, just squeezing squeezing you know uh, squeezing squeezing the money out of people let's let's envision a world where that stuff doesn't happen and what's more let us let's envision okay what are the replacements of this well kind people the people who are quote at the top unquote you know caring enough um about you know living within their means i guess without feeling the need to just keep you know raising up the prices I heard that there was something with Amazon a while ago. My buddy Jeremy told me about this, that if they saw 
Okay, so typically people who have t- typically people who have money can afford to buy a you know one thousand dollar iPhone, for instance. Um, so I guess what Amazon was doing was they were seeing, they're noticing that if you if if the you know the people who are buying these ex- the, the the expensive iPhones and stuff like that. When they signed into Amazon to order stuff, they'd get a different price, a much higher price, than someone who was not ordering expensive items. So, on the one hand, we could think, oh, good, you know, good. You know, if they can afford it, well, then good. You know, raise the price for them and keep it at a lower price for everyone else. Well, a lot of these folks who are buying these iPhones hardly have, I mean, they had to save up to get that iPhone for their kid, for instance, their 10-year-old in junior high who wants so bad to not be made fun of by their classmates because they don't have a cell phone yet. And they're pressured. Mom, Dad, you got to get me the latest iPhone. So the parents get them, you know, some old iPhone 4 or 5S or something. No, this isn't the latest. Because then guess what? The kids are making fun of them at school. Because it's not the latest, you know, 10 or whatever. I remember when I was substitute teaching, that would happen all the time. The kids are like, Mr. C, what kind of phone do you have? And I'd show them. They go, mine's better than yours. And I thought, oh, my God. You know, imagine just how ruthless these kids are to each other. And it's so bizarre. It's so bizarre. So let us collectively think together of this idea that we're going to bring into this world, okay, the new, the new world, the new earth, we're going to bring into this where it's based on cooperation, it's based on reciprocation, it's based on the golden rule, it's based on you scratch my back, I scratch yours. We help each other out. You know, you, 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 you know, walking down the sidewalk. Well, okay, if you're in America, let's stay on the right side of the sidewalk. Kind of like how cars drive in the street. Let's stay on the right side of the sidewalk, at least this way. You know, there's room for everyone. And you don't, people, you don't have people walking on the other side and, or swaying all over. Let's, let's imagine, you know, just these, these courtesies. I was on the subway earlier today. You could check out my Instagram story if it's still up by the time I release this. I took a video. There's a guy who got onto the, you know, you're not supposed to play music, you know, out loud on the train. And uh, this dude got on, and he, he's pumping his ghetto blaster so loud, so loud, he's got his boombox just blasting, blasting, blasting. And so I don't get migraines at all. But I walked over to him, and I said, hey, man, I got a migraine. Could you like, turn that down? He goes, I'm getting off the next stop. I said, it's really, really loud. I'm getting off the next stop. Don't worry about it. Like, whoa, man. Whoa. How about, sure, we're all in it together, man. We're all in it together. Of course, I understand. Why did I even think that it was a good idea to, to pump up the volume to number 11? Why did I feel that that was necessary? These are the kinds of questions that I want to ask people. I was thinking in my brain uh, how I was imagining... How fun it would be, you know, in a situation like that where suddenly I just start talking really loud on the phone and I sit directly behind him and I'm talking really loud, really loud in the seat behind him. I'm going, hey, Joe. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. It's so good to talk to you. I haven't talked to you forever. Man, this is awesome. So great to talk to you, man. How are the kids? You know, and so, so the whole time. You know, it's funny because then it'd be funny if he's like, hey, man, can you quiet it down? I'm trying to hear my music. (laughs) Can you quiet it down? I'm trying to hear my music. I'm trying to blast it so uh, all of California can hear this. So let's imagine the new earth. Consideration. Cooperation. It really doesn't take much at all, you guys. I promise. We don't have to be in survival mode all the time. In fact, uh, when you're in survival mode, you're stressed out. Uh, you get wrinkles on your face, you get, 
you know, all kinds of un unwanted and unexpected happenings. I'm looking in the mirror now, and I, I'm noticing the, uh, you know how Ethan Hawke, you ever seen uh, Before Sunrise, I think it was called? It was part two. There was Before Sunset and then Before Sunrise. Ethan Hawke and Julia Delpy, I believe, which, by the way, she's an extraordinary musician. So sweet, sweet voice. Uh, when they meet each other again the second time, she goes, what's this? And she points at this crease that's in his forehead. And that comes from, you know, either squ not squinting, but, you know, furrowing your brow. You know that you furrow your brow too much when, when you, got, you got that kind of thing in your forehead. Like, that's, that's crazy. I shouldn't have that in there. That's a sign of what? Taking on the world. That's... <laughs> Once I started finding out information about manifestation of reality, um, how to be better versions of ourselves, all that stuff, holy cow. You know, I, suddenly I felt like it was my mission to save everybody. Mm. And what comes with that? Stress. Because what am I trying to do? I'm trying to alter the world to fit this perspective. Um... For the simple fact that I don't, you know, I don't want to live in the in a world where uh, it's every man for himself, where people are just nitpicking and stuff. How did I ever get to the point where diamonds and coffee and chocolate became these things that uh, people kill and die over? Whoa! How did that? How did that ever happen? There's a big spider out here. I'm gonna. Wow. There, we're going to, uh, you're going to go with me on a journey while I capture this spider and throw him, throw him over the balcony. Yes, his, his, he will, he or she will be misplaced. Um, all right, here we go. Let's hope there aren't any babies in there. Don't bite me, okay? We're trying to work together on this. I'm trying to save your life. Okay? Whoop, shit. Whoop, there you go. There we go. We got a live one here. Come on. Let's work together on this one. Whoop, there we go. And over you go. Whew. Hopefully that's the only spider. It sure happens all the time. So there we go. Spider has been safely excavated. Safely excavated. And as far as I know, it was not harmed. And there are no babies, spider babies attached to this thing. So that is always good. Oh, 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 don't go near that, Gonzo. I think that's, I think that's a spider. Okay, I think that's another spider. We got another spider here. I just went out to the kitchen. We got another spider here. Watch out, guys. Did I step on this guy? Is this a fly? This is a fly. Oh, come here, little guy. Oh, hope you're not damaged. Here. Could put you out on the balcony. Oh, I hope no one squashed you. Jeez. I could put you, on, put you right here on the ledge. Oh, here you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. You okay? There you go. There you go. Oh, man. All right. All right. Here we go. We saved a spider. 
We saved a fly. Not bad. This is how the utopian society begins. Helping out your fellow creatures. Being good. I discovered Virginia. Ashburn, Virginia. Most, a lot of my listeners come from a place called Mountain View in California and then Ashburn, Virginia. And I will be doing a podcast about Ashburn, Virginia. Little facts and figures and such. And so, stay tuned to that. It just blows my mind how far this podcast stretches. All, all these different countries. It's really quite... Astonishing to think that way out there in the middle of you know let's let's read through a few of these this is um I'm looking up the um little analytics thing here that they got on on anchor they got sort of an analytics situation okay. Let's see. Uh, let's go over here. Where is this? Okay, check this out. This is crazy. United States, France, Germany, United Kingdom, Ireland, Finland, Canada, Sweden, China, Russia, Norway, Netherlands, Australia, Ukraine, Japan, Belgium, Hong Kong, Portugal, Spain, Mexico, India, Italy, Brazil, Denmark, Philippines, Czechia, South Africa, Hungary, New Zealand, Israel, Taiwan, Austria, Indonesia, Thailand, United Arab Emirates, Switzerland, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Singapore, Zimbabwe, Argentina, Guatemala, Chile, Libya, Poland, Pakistan, Bolivia, Colombia, Iceland, Gibraltar, Romania, Peru, Dominican Republic, Yemen, Republic of Korea, Latvia, Slovakia, Jamaica, Vietnam, Belarus, Republic of Lithuania, Luxembourg, Kenya, Kazakhstan, Bermuda, Costa Rica, Serbia, Ghana, Slovenia, Croatia, and Uruguay. Whoa, man. I mean, wow. That is just, that is just crazy. Oh, Connecticut. Okay, so it looks like with the United States here, Connecticut is almost tied with California. So Virginia, 70% of my listeners in the United States come from Ashburn, Virginia, you guys. So if you're listening to me, keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. The next, um, I think the next podcast is going to feature, feature some of those things. In California, most of it, yeah, 73% of it comes from Mountain View. So I'll do a podcast about you guys too. And then Connecticut... Oh, Connecticut's all over the place. Oh, no, Fairfield. Fairfield. 99% comes from Fairfield. So it's cool. We got these interesting sort of country sounds. We got Fairfield, Mountain View, Ashburn. Very, very, very Americana. Just, man, just, just astounding. You know, you're always welcome to call the Inspirato Projecto hotline, which is 561-203-9179. Call the voicemail, and I will play it on the show. In fact, in fact, I will play for you a voicemail that I got from someone you might recognize. So I just got this the other day, so I'm gonna, I'll post it on here in, in the next, very next segment. So you can kind of get an idea as to the, the various folks who are contributing to this, this madness. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be coming up next. Also, if you – so send me, your, you know, send me your dreams, send me your ideas, all that razzmatazz. Uh, also, also, email me if you want to hear your songs on this. Email it to inspiratoprojecto 
at gmail.com. Email that to me. Email me your audio. Same thing. Email it to me, and I'll, uh, and I'll, uh, you know, I'll play it on here. So, there you go. And without further ado, here comes a here comes a call from the Inspirato Projecto Hotline five six one two zero three nine one seven nine or baby. going this large month the lion uh sometimes i'll just sit out here and just kind of look around for stuff that i want to call in and tell you about i saw a man or creature of some sort running down the street and he had a ski mask on his head uh, and it's hot outside it's 90 degrees out there and that man he's running down the street with a ski mask on his on his head and uh he's got a backpack and in that backpack is what looks like a bum monkey. And I've never seen something like that, so I, I just kept my eyes on him until he just ran off into the distance. So, <clears throat> I had to let you know, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> 